Hi, I'm Stephen Han and this is going to be my new store. So I tried to do a video before before we started renovating but I, the sound wasn't turned on so that happened. So I'll have some clips of the store before we started renovating and now. So I, I want to talk about this new store, what it's going to be like and why I'm doing it. So. The first thing is my family both own art, my mum and my dad own archery stores. So that's the first thing. And they are both, well dad's passed away, but they were both adamant about not growing and being a one person operation. That you manage it and you're in control, basically. So having a business that you can control and you're not reliant on staff. So, now I've got 16 staff um, at the moment and as you grow it creates more challenges. So when you see a bigger store don't think well that's good, it's different. Um, there's pluses and minuses and I suppose I want to talk a bit about that and this. So the first thing is I've had a larger store before in Canberra um, which I rented, it cost me $1000 a week and that was over 10 years ago. It was about half the size of this store. Um, now what's good about a big store is you can have lots of different range of products but it's no use having a huge range of products if you don't sell it. So it's no use stocking, I'm going to pick a brand of Bow X if it doesn't sell. So you've got to have products that turn over. So but I'm hoping by having a larger store like this I can bring more shipping containers in, reduce cost and bring more products in that will sell, i.e. targets, uh, 3D targets, target bags, cases, quivers, different arrows, all stuff that consumes lots of space I'll be able to stock in this warehouse. So I also think I'm going to be able to increase the number of archers shooting in this local area um, through having a large indoor range. So I intend to have a 30 meter by 20 meter um, indoor shooting range next to this building. Um, that's costing about $100,000 to build. So this building here, and I'll just spin around. Um, this building here is, I'm gonna get this wrong. It's 30 meters, 30 meters down that way, maybe. It's longer than 30 meters down that way because it's like two sheds. So it might be 40 meters down that way, but there's also an office area in here, which I'll take you through here. So there's an office area through here. Um, and I think it's about, sorry for being vague. I think it's probably 30 meters in that way. The building's 900 square meters. So that's sort of what it is. So this building used to be um, a, wreck a wreckers. So you, they used to wreck Toyota cars here and I don't think the building's been cleaned in 20 years. It was basically run by a group of guys and I don't think they ever cleaned the toilets and they certainly didn't clean the kitchen because it's a mess. Um, and yes, the toilets are a mess too. So the whole place is dirty and messy. So, and we've been trying to sort of clean it up um, and you're gonna see piles and piles of stuff here that um, some of my staff have been ripping apart and tearing down to try and get it to a stage we'll, we'll, where we'll be able to start building a new store. So I'm just going to take you around. So one of the things about setting up a new store is security. Um, so I've been in Canberra, sorry, I was in Canberra for 20 years and at the last big warehouse like this I got broken into every month and it wasn't very enjoyable for me. I'm paying $1,000 a week, I've got lots of staff working, and to sell, to cover the $1,000 a week rent, you've got to sell like, you know, 10 plus bows, and that takes so many hours. Basically, if you could cover the cost of all your staff and the rent and everything, it meant that on maybe Saturday afternoon, you might make a profit. So it wasn't, I was selling lots, but I wasn't making a lot of profit. So where if you're a one person operation with low overheads, basically anything you sell, you make profit from. So just bear that in mind. So here in this warehouse, security is a huge issue for me. So all these walls here and like that door is going to go. Um, these door, these walls are all going to be lined. Um, 
they're going to be lined with archery gear obviously but it's going to be lined so if you rip off the tin um, on one side you're going to get another layer um, to get through and obviously security um, in the back here was a spray um, this was a spray spray booth for cars and like you know a crash repair shop so we've taken down the walls and we sort of get in, in through here and all in the back there's all the fans that ex that pull off all the gases and all that sort of stuff but let's just take a thing so this building itself we're going to be replacing some of the iron on the outside which is dented we're repainting repainting the building um and i've got to add security kind of features in here now one of the this is some of the stuff that we've ripped out so far or my staff have ripped out um sorry i'm just thinking so we've got to replace the the toilet in the kitchen which i'm going to show you because it's a bit of a mess um and in here one of the big issues is how we lay it all out and i'm not over how i'm going to lay it out yet like the in the back here we've got all um racking now i'm going to need pallet racking i'm going to need a forklift um so how much pallet racking i need is kind of it's a bit of a guess so we're going to have to take a bit of a guess about how much racking we need in here um because i would ideally like like the majority of my stock out on the floor so you can kind of touch and feel it so for example with a site let's say sites come in red green blue black silver purple red and black which is just one brand of site i want those sites on display and the number of stock below it i don't want them out the back in a warehouse here so you have to so the stock's held in two locations i want the stock held in one location to make it easier for customers easier for pulling out orders so at the moment in my shop some of the stock is on display some of it's out the back in the warehouse and it's and sometimes you think you don't have it but you do you've got piles of it in boxes so it becomes it becomes hard because the a staff member might be doing an order and go we don't have any of that but we actually do and it's like no we do it's out in the back in container number three or it's upstairs in the box at the end of the and when you've got 16 staff working they all don't know where the stuff is it becomes very hard to keep up to date because their stock coming in all the time so hopefully that's what this will um, rectify now let's just talk about what we're going to be doing we're going to be putting a big solar system on the roof of this place um, to generate power there's big tanks out the back here which feed this place with water which is cool i like that i like the whole renewable thing um, the shooting range next door it's going to cost a hundred thousand dollars to build still debating whether to put concrete as a floor base or whether just to stick with gravel um, if I was to lay concrete it's another sixty thousand um, dollars signs we've got to paint the front paint the building and we've got to think about how, how we present to the public as far as how we open up so at the moment my current thought is that that roller door there um, is going to be entrance for the public so I might have doors on the inside so you roll up the roller door and then the doors will open up to the public so it'll be like a double layer of security and still not allow all the wind and the flies to sort of come into the building so got to think about that and whether it'll be too hot or too cold here got to sort of see how that rolls as well because a lot of this roof has got vents up here um, so the hot air will um, dissipate through the top which is a problem in winter because obviously the hot air is going to go out through the vents so I'll show you into the offices just up here we just tore down this today there was um, a mezzanine area up here which we which Chris took down today um, so there was a staircase up and a mezzanine area and what we're going to do is we're going to use that to store like um pallets of stuff up there like we might sort of targets or something which we use a forklift to get to so staff are not going up and down stairs reducing the risk hazard of tripping and all that sort of stuff 
we've got to do something with this area here this is like just a bit of an open space it was a bit of a storage area I don't know what we're going to do with that it might be a bow room this is going to be an office area um, this is a basic office now this is going to be an office an office area where most of the staff who do internet orders will be because um, at the moment you'll be doing internet orders customers will come in and you're halfway through doing an order and then you get distracted and you kind of don't know where you're up to and it's it's hard to focus and it's hard to restart so by having a separate area i'm hoping that will be better so for customers they'll be out in the other area with there'll be desks out there and computers and stuff but in here this is where we'll do the internet orders and probably some will be stand up and some will be sit down desks so now when you buy a place you see there there was a picture on that wall hiding that so we've got to fix that we've got to fix all the security so these doors with just glass they're going to have to be like steel some sort of steel or something to stop people breaking in the windows here are going to have to uh, require um, roller shutters on the outside now i'm a huge fan of buying property so um if you rent the landlord tends to up the rent every year so in that place i rented the rent was a thousand dollars every year regardless of what was going on he upped the rent by five percent if you own the property the rent will decrease every year because you paid off part of it huge fan of owning and that way if you make improvements it's yours your landlord's not going to keep up in the price because you put investment into it um, i haven't had much luck with landlords um, they tend to be in it for what they can get as far as you know they'll charge you as much as you can afford to pay and it's just I'd much prefer to own. This is the kitchen area and the kitchen's going to come out. All these walls are just rubbish. Like they are just just rubbish. And you can kind of now again I'm going to say the landlord who owned this building I don't think spent a cent on it in 20-30 years. And this is why I'm a huge fan of buying a property because then it's yours to be responsible for. Um, so this is the kitchen area and you can kind of see the walls pretty average. The kitchen's pretty average. So that's all gonna come out. The walls in here are gonna come out. I think this ceiling fan is probably too low. I don't know what to do with that, but it is what it is. Um, I'll show you the toilet that we ripped out. So this is the toilet, it's got a shower area, that's all been ripped out, it's going to be, I'm going to lay new tiles and stuff in there. So, it's a huge, huge job. Um, there, was a, there was a wall through here, which we, um, Leanne ripped out last week. Um, massive, massive job. But on the plus side, for me, it's going to mean we're going to store stock twice as much stuff it's going to be more convenient easier to get at uh, for us so quicker to do orders we're going to bring more stuff in by containers which means reducing costs we're going to stock more items which means more choice for consumers and hopefully we'll be able to stock more items so we don't get out of stock of stuff so that's the purpose of this um, now with the indoor shooting range, the purpose of that is to get more people to shoot. So create a fun shooting environment to teach people how to shoot. Um, we'll probably do 3D shoots in there. We'll do indoor shoots. We'll do just stuff like pri probably prize money shoots. Um, so that's the plan to get more people shooting. So now going back to where I started this video, which was my dad's view compared to my view. Dad's view was like, he enjoyed selling archery gear and he wanted things that he controlled and that was it. This is a bit out of my control, right? Now I used to manage the health budget, you know, the hospital health budget, which was billions of dollars, which is not too bad. You just allocate the funds out to plate places. But this to me is like, you know, a container coming in, like I've got a container due from PSE. It's $200,000 worth of bows. It blows my brain. It's like, how can I afford to pay for that? 
Um, so the amount of stress for me far exceeds like what it was in health or what it is as a one person enterprise. Um, you have all sorts of issues with, you know, if staff come to work and they don't. Um, and my dad used to say that the bigger you are, the bigger your problems are. Because the more customers you're dealing with, the more problems you have. That's, so when you ever think about expanding and growing, make sure you can do it financially. Um, I've done it pretty slowly, so this is, I've been doing this for 30 years. It's been a very gross, slow, steady pace. I think my staff are ready. Um, I think I'm ready. I think we're kind of ready. It will be a stretch, but I'm feeling like we're pretty much good to go. I feel like I've got a good team of staff, um, all archers, 16 archers, um, different skill levels in different areas. So I'm pretty confident that we can grow to another level, um, and that's where I'd sort of like to see it. But most of it's about having a vision and just going, this is where I want to get to, and this is yeah, so that's where I want to get to. So I want to get more people shooting, more kids shooting, more fun, and the whole archery thing, that's just a, Sully Bows is just a side effect. You know, being able to pay for stuff, wages and all that sort of stuff is, that's a result of having a successful business. So that's where I want to get to, and that's it. So anyway, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. Um, we'll do a follow-up video as we progress and start to build. The walls for this shop are due in on the 11th. We've got to clean the floors. We've got to get rid of all that stuff. We've got to paint the buildings. Um, so I'll do videos of the of the shop at the various stages as we build it um, to see how we go with that. Thanks for watching. Bye.